So you are hosting an exchange student and something strange is starting to happen. You know this is a great kid. You're happy to have invited this kid to your home, but things are starting to happen that make you wonder, is this a cultural problem or is it personal? Maybe your student is often late. Maybe it seems like the student is not being very forthright with you. But this is just such a good kid. He doesn't seem like the kind of person who would lie. So why doesn't he just come out and say things like they are? Punctuality and communication are just a couple of areas where cultural values do play a really big role. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at this very, very important question that comes up again and again when we are interacting with people from other cultures. Is it cultural or is it personal? My name is Brenda Padilla Erickson. I'm a specialist in cultural diversity from Seattle, living in Spain. There's a really useful model for answering this question or thinking about this question of is it personal or is it cultural when we're interacting with people from other cultures. It comes from cross-cultural psychology. We start with this circle, I like using circles to represent this, that represents our human nature. And that is like what we share with people around the world all of us. For example, cross-cultural psychologists have identified a series of emotions that people around the world experience that they're able to identify when you show them pictures of faces that are expressing those emotions. So we have this human nature that we share and no one disputes the fact that that is something common to everyone. However, we're still doing a lot of research to find out just how much of our behaviors come from sort of like our biology and instincts. Now there's a second ring and that ring represents your personality. That's what you bring to the board and it's shaped uh, to a great degree by your experiences and your upbringing. But let's imagine that your human nature expresses itself through your personality. So your personality kind of shapes the way that you express your human nature as a unique person walking around this world. And finally, there is a third ring and that's culture. The culture that you grew up in, where you learned what was right and wrong, where you learned how to see the world, that culture shaped your values. Those cultural values are your preferences, your priorities in any given situation. What will you choose? That's based on your personal values and your personality, of course, but it's also shaped in many ways by the culture where you grew up. Think how your human nature is being expressed through your personality. And from there, your personality is being expressed through this shaping that has taken place in the culture where you were born and raised. So getting back to our question, is it cultural or is it personal? We've got a model that can help us think about this, but the answer does not appear to be very clear. Experts like Dr. Nancy J. Adler from McGill University in Montreal, the author of this management textbook, helping managers work with people from around the world, they have really interesting advice. Dr. Adler says, whenever you're working with someone, interacting with someone from another culture, and things are not making sense, rather than heading directly to the explanation that it's personal, that this person is maybe I can't trust them or they're just late all the time, we should always stop and learn about the culture, consider the culture, ask questions about the culture that this person comes from. So let's go back to our scenarios at the beginning. First, we have a student who is often late. We've talked to this student, we've explained it, we've uh, laid everything out very clearly how things work, and still they're arriving late. I'm living in a culture with a very different time uh, concept than I grew up with in the United States. People in Spain value punctuality, but there are many things they value even more. So if they're trying to go from A to B and a variety of things happen along the way, they make choices based on their cultural values that even though they're trying so hard to be on time, often they are not, at least according to American standards. 
And Spain is just an example of countries around the world that have very different concepts of time and very different values, cultural values, regarding how to spend that time. Now, what about the situation of a student who doesn't seem to be very forthright? They seem to beat around the bush and not get to the point, and we're wondering, this is a great kid. Are they trying to trick me? Are they being devious? It's so important, again, to understand that there are cultural values around the world that um, really ask people to think more about others' feelings and saving face, making other people look good, rather than giving the truth on a platter like sometimes we do in the United States. Sometimes, not always. So those are just a couple of examples, and there are so many out there. The bottom line is that cultural exchange is a chance to explore this incredibly interesting mix of cultural and personal. In the area of values, beliefs, practices, so many different areas. So don't be afraid of this. It's a great question. It's a fun question to explore and it holds a lot of learning. Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe for more videos about all aspects of cultural diversity. See you next time.